Makerere University students flock Center for COVID-19 vaccination as Ethiopians rally in capital city to support government as rebels advance. A very good evening to you tuned in to UBC TV. We welcome you warmly. UBC News tonight, this Monday, the 8th of November, 2021. It's me, Michael Jedan Dukuma, with Elizabeth Nakakoni, and this is what we have for you tonight. The Uganda police has released portrait sketches of prime suspects in the recent Komamboga bomb attack at the Digida Pok Joint. Police spokesperson Fred Enanga said that the two suspects are linked to the criminal gangs being investigated, orchestrating who invested in orchestrating terrorism activities in Uganda. We have details to this. The released sketches originate from the witnesses' testimony on the incident at Komamboga Bombu attack, which claimed the life of a waiter, while others were injured. Uh, premises. So we are going to share these ones widely, uh, so that uh, even if they're in hiding or in whatever corner they are, we have to ensure that we have them uh, traced and uh, arrested. Police links these portraits to the ongoing investigations on the criminal gang being trained to destabilize the country. The police spokesperson Fred Nanga told the media that a training is conducted by these ADF-linked criminals. Uh, they, they have been uh, primarily uh, inspired uh, by the ADF ideology of superiority of their religious belief which is the primary source of their lethal attacks. Police have discovered several components of improvised explosive devices. Are being uh, made using nails, ball bearings and sharp nails that can easily penetrate the skin and organs in the human body. So it really shows you that the motivation of these uh, terrorists is actually to cause as much injury and damage uh, to, to Ugandans. Similarly, police have summoned the chairman of the new reformed pressure group, People's Front for Transition, Dr. Kiza Besji, and Imitiana municipality legislator, Francis Zake, over violent utterances. That uh, NOOP, uh, together with other violent groups and actors, uh, as well as uh, uh, the pressure group under Dr. Kiza Besji, and indicate that they are going to use all means, all available means, uh, to cause change of a legitimate uh, government. The same inappropriate statements of using illegitimate and unconstitutional means were also made by Honorable Francis Zake. Our political crimes department has taken uh, a serious note of these uh, utterances and has opened case files. Uh, respectively. In other development, the Directorate of Criminal Intelligence has unveiled the trail which led to the arrest of NUPO's Secretary for Mobilization in Stan Uganda, Moses Bigira, in connection to fraud. And he claimed responsibility and confirmed this to one of the confidants of Right Honorable Deputy Speaker. Bigira further indicated that he belongs to a syndicate team that is too big, constituted of legal officers that will not leave any stone unturned until their interests are met. During that conversation, Bijirwa said for starters, they needed 100 million to cease fire. Meanwhile, in the enforcement of curfew in the last week's operations, police arrested 1,790 pedestrians, impounded 1,310 motor vehicles, and 3,487 motorcycles, though some were released on caution, while others are still under court process, with several vehicles and motorcycles still at different police stations due to lack of proper documents by purported owners. Abdul Nasili Lubwama, UBC News. Makerere University Hospital students have flooded the center for COVID jab. It is the second week since physical learning for institutions of higher learning reopened. As physical learning for institutions of higher learning enters the second week, students have been vaccinated in preparation for physical learning. 
Um, I feel like it reduces the risk of me getting corona. Yeah. And for safety, it's my responsibility as a citizen. Came here to get vaccinated. Uh, mainly, mainly because I feel I'll be inconvenienced if I don't get vaccinated at the university. At Makere University, students took the job at Makere University Hospital. And indeed it's a requirement. It's not only about life, but these days, everywhere you go, you must present your vaccination card. Everywhere. After the vaccine, yeah, I felt somehow sick, like for two days, but finally it became okay. And also, about immunization, I, as myself, have taken a first jab, and I'm waiting to take the second jab. The director of Makere University Hospital, Dr. Joseph Atubari Omugisha, notes the numbers of students who go for vaccination daily has increased. And uh, uh, when the university allowed more students to come to the main campus, of, you know, for f the physical academic activities, the numbers increased to between 100 and 200 being vaccinated per day. That is uh, students. But, and I should say that last Friday, that was 5th of uh, November uh, 2021, we had 228 students vaccinated against COVID-19. The institution has also organized a college-based system where students are vaccinated. Get that apart from vaccinating from the university hospital, we are extending this to the different colleges. And uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, we shall be starting with the College of Health Sciences uh, and encouraging as many students and, uh, to come. Kampala International University adopted a staggered system of study and first-year students have reported today but plan to install a vaccination center for students and staff. And we have also, we are working with K KCCA, the Makinde Division. We are collecting data. For those who have not vaccinated, we are asking them to go and vaccinate in the neighboring centers. However, to make it much easier, we are collaborating with the division uh, between the 23rd November and the 25th at KIU Kansanga, we will have a vaccination center specifically targeting our staff and students. And we have made this information available through social media, the university website. So we think that way we are going to uh, have a boost even for those who will be coming in the subsequent weeks. Sada Mubale, UBC News, Kampa. The Forum for Democratic Change wants government to reduce the charges that public should pay while using the Entebbe Expressway. Uh, the party deputy spokesperson John Chukonyogo says that the public will divert from using the road and government will not recover the money. Addressing journalists at the FDC headquarters in Najana Kumbi, the party deputy spokesperson John Chukonyogo was dissatisfied with the Entebbe Express Highway road troll system. He urged government to reduce the charges if it's to recover the money used on the construction, which according to the party are not affordable to ordinary citizens. Why do you raise the money to those levels to deny people using the road, which they should have been using, and we are paying taxes from fuel, from everything, and you deny us this opportunity of using our roads. According to the payment schedule, the rates for a 400cc motorbike pays 3,000 shillings, while vehicles will pay between 5,000 to 18,000 for light and heavy vehicles, respectively. This money we borrowed here, it is us who are going to pay. Now they are charging you, a vehicle like mine, about 15,000 whenever you use that road. So if you are working in Entebbe and you want to use it to go to Kampala, you pay 15. Then pay 15 again when we are coming back, which means you are going to pay 900,000 per month. However, the party also appeals to government as they gradually plan to reopen fully to also mind about lifting curfew hours to allow people, especially in the markets, finish up with work. So it does not make sense to maintain the curfew at 7 p.m when practically we can't reach home by 7 p.m. So we are appealing to government to lift the cafe from 7 to 10 p.m. Lydia Chomkama, UBC News. Leaders in the central business 
districts are the reason why prices of commodities have hiked because of their complacency when it comes to putting up policies that actually bite. The NUP spokesperson, Joel Senyonyi, thinks if there was cooperation among the leaders in Kampala, prices of commodities would favor the ordinary Ugandan. Days back, prices of cooking oil, matoke, tomatoes, among other commodities, hiked. The spokesperson of National Inter Platform, Joel Senyonyi, has attributed this to bad leadership and structures. When you go to the market to buy food and you find that the price is now two times higher than it was last month, it has a connection to leadership. When a leadership does not put in place the right policies, when a leadership is not focused on the people and delivering to the people, but their preoccupation is how do I keep in power? Everything else will be ignored and it will suffer. We must get leaders who are concerned about the ordinary Ugandan. Senyonyi has also dismissed allegations that they are planning demonstrations as police had earlier indicated in their statement. Either Enanga or his informers have a problem. One of the two, or both of them actually, have got a serious problem. Because you see, as NUP, whatever we do, we announce publicly, pleaders, whether it be in the police and other security organs, they are broke and they want to get some money. And Mr. Museveni releases money very easily once he feels my chair is threatened. NUP is planning something, let's release money so that we quell whatever NUP is planning. They also demand an immediate and unconditional release of their colleagues who were arrested a week ago and also grant bail to Muhammad Isegirinya and Alan Sewanyana. We demand for the immediate release, the immediate unconditional release of these our comrades. They are Bwambale Joffre, also known as Western Prince, Mumbere Isaac, Basisa Brian, and Isande Atonozio. These are NUP leaders in Kasese who are having a meeting of a small group of them at the home of uh, the NUP district chairperson of Kasese. So for them to be arrested and charged with treason is, is very problematic. That, that's why on our part we, we have rejected to be part of initiatives like iPod. That these people be released on bail so that they go and access better healthcare, better management. Then they will face trial because you need people who are alive to face trial. If they die, they cannot face trial. Senyonyi says the health of the MPs should be priority than remanding them. Shaidat Nasaku, UBC News. Nira Uganda is in a national citizenship registration drive through which national identity cards will be issued to Ugandans living in the diaspora. The initiative is already going on in Canada. According to the Uganda's High Commissioner to Canada, Ambassador Joy Rutha Cheng, the initiative which started... Uh, in the provinces of Ottawa, Toronto, and Edmonton, targets all Ugandan nationals in Canada. Ugandans living in Canada have appreciated the initiative and applauded the government of Uganda, the embassy in Canada, and NIRA as well. We've already started uh, registering the Ugandans who left uh, Uganda and came to Canada we, we, before the time we were issuing national IDs. Uh, we started on 29th of October from River Jordan Ministries Church on 1 Cleo, Cleopatra Drive, Nepin, and we've registered more than 100 Ugandans to get the national IDs. And then we moved to uh, Toronto. This is part of the mandate of NIRA to extend their services, to extend its services to the diaspora so that diaspora communities are well served and settled wherever they are and they are able to do and uh, look, uh, be able to uh, carry out all their services and activities that they want to do home. For the services being uh, rendered to my community by NILA and immigration officers, through our ambassador, Mrs. Achen, we are really appreciate her and we really appreciate such services when they come close to our ends. It is a service that truly speaking, we have been waiting for for a long time. We thought three years ago we would have been able to do this, but we didn't get a chance to do that. So now that we have finally done it, 
I am so grateful and I felt it right in my heart to extend my very sincere gratitude for the service that we have received today. People from other provinces that are far away from Ottawa and they cannot drive to the embassy, we shall be moving from uh, region to region and make sure that all of you are served. We are here for you and we are here at your best interest. Members of the Uganda chapter of the Pan-African Parliament have pledged support towards Zimbabwe's quest for presidency of the House. Ngora County Member of Parliament Juliet Achayo says that supporting Zimbabwe to take over leadership of the Parliament will cement legislative resolutions between the two countries. This was during a courtesy paid to Uganda's Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Anita Among, by the Speaker of the Parliament of Zimbabwe, Jacob Francis Mzweda Mililo. It was a courtesy call on Uganda's Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Anita Among, and it. Zimbabwe's Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Francis Mzweda Mililo, was in the country to seek Uganda's support towards taking over leadership of the Pan-African Parliament. Right Honorable Speaker, they've also directed that the elections must take place under the supervision of the AU Legal Council, not the pub clerk of Parliament. He reminded the Deputy Speaker of a similar commitment made by former Ugandan Speaker of Parliament Rebecca Kadaga, something among pledged to uphold. I hope my brother, who shares my name, uh, will fulfill that promise to come to Zimbabwe. I can give you a commitment to the right honorable Jacob Lanya, who will be in Zimbabwe when you need him. Mm -hmm. He's a very flexible person. Thank you. And we will do what the other speaker was supposed to do. Thank you. And we will keep the relationship even more firm. This commitment was made in the presence of the Ugandan chapter members of the Pan-African Parliament. These included Felix Okot Ogong, Patrick Oshabe, and Julieta Chayo, among others. Apparently, they have a candidate for the Pan-African President, Pan-African Parliament President, and we're going to, we have met before, because we were there in May, it was when he was canvassing for votes. We had discussions with Chief before, the Honorable Chief, so apparently we, 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 we stood by him as the Ugandan chapter, and we're going to converse for him votes. That's what we agreed as a delegation of Uganda. This commitment was made moments before sharing of gifts and pleasantries between the two who later bid each other farewell. Henry Okrut, UBC. The Minister for Science and Technology, Monika Museniro, has today launched the National Science Week at Color Independence Grounds. The Minister reiterated government commitment to support science-led innovations. President Yoweri Museveni has always emphasized science and technology for the development of Uganda. This has given scientists and innovators morale to invest in new technologies for the country's development. Uh, this flag is not just for this exhibition, but it is flagging of science, technology and innovation in the new speed that it is supposed to move and take the country alongside with it. There we go! Minister for Science and Technology, Dr. Monica Musenero, launched the National Science Week at Kololo. The Science Week showcases Uganda's ability in science and innovation. Because sometimes we, many people, are so negative about our abilities, not just as Ugandans but as Africans. I say no to that mindset. Uganda can 
Africa can and we are going to do it. I just want to invite you into that space of faith. We are going to do it. We cannot allow to leave our countries as underdeveloped. It is us, the citizens, who must take on this responsibility and set our face like flint and not be distracted until we achieve the goal for a science-led socio-economic transformation of our nation. Musenero reiterated government commitment to support innovators. If we want to transform this nation, we have to take by the bull by the horns and move science and put it at the forefront and really set our face to make science uh, drive socio-economic transformation and industrialization. The six prioritized industrial chains being exhibited include pathogen economy, mobility economy, agro-security, beauty, engineering, and digital economy. President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni is expected to close the exhibition on Wednesday. The World Science Day for Peace and Development is celebrated annually on November 10th. Bernard Higa, UBC News. Uganda has marked the radiography day celebrated every 8th of November after the discovery of X-rays in 1895. Society of Radiography of Uganda has organized a day's health camp at China Uganda Friendship Hospital in Naguru and over 100 expectant mothers were scanned. However, radiographers demanded for a revision of the radiography service to regulate abuse of imaging and scanning services. Uganda has joined the world to commemorate Radiography Day. With the significance of the anniversary of the discovery of the X-ray, the role radiographers play, and awareness of the benefits of medical imaging. The radiographers use this day to create awareness <coughs> about the safe use of X-rays. That's why we are professionals. You are not supposed to use these X-rays when you are not trained to use them. Uh, and there is also the medical physicists who also work in line with the X-rays. Radiography is the art and science of using radiation to provide images of the tissues, organs, bones, and vessels in the human body. Society of Radiography of Uganda has marked this year's celebrations on the theme, the role of radiography in a pandemic, with a healthy camp where expectant mothers were given free ultrasound scan services at China Uganda Friendship Hospital in Naguru. Rosaline Achero, a resident of Motongo and others, benefited from the day's free service. And it's really good to get a scan when you're expecting because it helps you to plan for your baby well. Like you get to know the sex of your child, the position of your child, if it's positioned well, if there are any issues and you can get proper help. Juma Ojwanga from Allied Health Professionals Council decried illegal and untrained workers in the profession. Professionals and untrained ones especially have encroached into offering ultrasound services. And once they offer, people always look at us as the ones who have provided the service. Yes, yes it is not us. It is uh, people whom we can call illegal uh, imaging services providers. However, other imaging practitioners from Society of Radiograph of Uganda demanded for a revised edition of regulatory documents and scheme of service. In, 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 uh, I think in February uh, 2007 wrote to public service to ensure that uh, radiography professionals who are uh, bachelor degree holders and above are recruited into public service and remunerated uh, according to their qualifications. Minister of Health, she has passed all the schemes of service, like uh, the lab scheme of service, the nursing scheme of service, and uh, what about the radiography scheme of service? How are we going to make sure that these people are paid in terms of what they are, the service they are giving? The practitioners also decry brainwash and a policy on salary scales. Singa tu waga lukube ila wano. Nizu kamba like classmates wanga haba singa, bonda haba singa bali UK. Bane waba mazo kusoma. Ate government teba wa milimu. Luwashi. Ela wesa nganti bane haba na haba singa. Babe ila mugwanga. Nga teba, teba funye milimu. Teba funa sente zeba agala. 
okusinzira ku bukugu bwabwe ekibavira ko okola ki okufuluma egwanga plain x rays diagnostic ultrasound services ct scan services mri services radiography services a communist in kampala with the plain x rays and ultrasound services in rural areas am ivan juko reporting for ubc news Over 30 journalists from the eight intergovernmental authority on development eager countries have trained on the role of the media in promoting peace and stability in the region. The five days training in Adama regional capital, Ethiopia, was dedicated to promoting peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development. The media's role in addressing conflicts in Africa cannot be underestimated, and IGAD is taking the lead in empowering the journalists. The training in the Ethiopian regional town of Adama comes at a time when the region is facing emerging peace and security threats. The overall objective of the workshop was to enhance media contribution to achieve sustainable peace, security and stability for the social and economic development of IGAD region. What are being fought online with the online bathrooms and the protests, with less and less accountability of actions as a result of disinformation campaigns outshadowing the use of the technology for positive purposes. So what is crucial is the degree of credibility and availability of the media that is committed to the truth and the truth only. Journalists do not reduce conflict. They present accurate and impartial news. Dr. George Kut from the Coalition for Peace in Africa argues that good reporting reduces conflict. What our conflict analysis should emphasize is to help us identify the conflict early warnings in each and every context so that our response in terms of peace journalism or conflict sensitive reporting should as much as possible try to engage with conflict at early warning and early response. Analysts argue that the role of professional journalists in mitigating conflicts is to provide non-partisan information, support opinion building, gather different views and opinions, and provide background information and in-depth analysis. Journalists from Ethiopia, Uganda, Kenya, Djibouti, South Sudan and Somalia discussed the role of the media in peace building. The media in Kenya in the year 2007 played a very critical role in fanning the violence that you know, engulfed the whole country. Since then, and of course with the introduction of this regulation um, that is intended to look at media and uh, traditional media, the media has become more responsible. In 2013, the government of South Sudan enacted three media laws which are now regulating the work of media uh, practitioners in the country. The Press and Journalists Act, I think it, uh, Chapter 8 or Section 8, um, provides for the creation of a Media Council of Uganda. Now, the Media Council of Uganda is meant to be our professional body that sets up the standards that we use, that, set, that uh, accredits us really to operate, that knows which journalist is qualified to handle what stories uh, and that sort of thing. But by increasing the overall knowledge of the consumers, it will enable journalists make decisions on their issues. Denis Sikor for UBC News in Adama, Ethiopia. Five people have been killed and over 1,000 heads of cattle stolen by Karimojong warriors in the last one week, according to the regional police spokesperson Mike Langole. Langole assures people in the region that security operatives are in control. Despite the Usalama Kwa Wote disarmament operation which started in July this year with the additional military hardware and human resource, cut wrestling is still on in the region. In the last one week, over 1,000 heads of cattle were stolen, although some were covered by joint security forces. 242 animals uh, were raided from Kamsalama on the 5th of November 2021. Uh, I've tried uh, their best, they recovered 209 heads of cattle. And um, uh, we have handed over to the owners. 
five civilians were murdered in different areas by Karamajong warriors in the course of cut wrestling. Two people, the Karamajong warriors, and the Sinyonoiti in Napa. Uh, one person in Kamusalaba. Uh, one person was also shot in Nakedere along Kabong Karanga Road. Then some other person was killed in Kotibo. Two cut wrestlers were killed by secret operatives and one was arrested and charged for possessing a gun illegally. One of cut wrestlers was arrested since we started the operation, 475, of which 256 have been convicted in the division court martial and they are serving sentences in the different prisons. SMG rifle with one ammunition was recovered in Kidepo zone. 98 guns and 1,049 ammunition were recovered since Usalama Kwa Wote operation was started in July this year. You'll be seeing tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Let's enjoy this short break. Do not miss what we have on return. Today in history. The last group of Indians that were expelled by the then president of Uganda, Idi Amin, left Uganda on this day. Three months earlier, Amin had issued an ultimatum to expel all Indian nationals who were not Ugandans by birth and had refused to be registered as Ugandan citizens. <laughs> Grow together with one of Uganda's largest companies. Apply for MTN shares for as low as 100,000 Uganda shillings. And when you apply using MTN Mobile Money, you get 10 free extra shares for every 100 shares you apply for. Dial star 165 star 65 hash or use the MyMTN app to apply now. The terms and conditions of the offer and other important information are set out in the prospectus. For assistance, visit any MTN service center or Stanbic Bank branch country wide or a licensed broker. Kagane <laughs> Deposit money onto your Airtel Money account. Reactivate your Airtel Money account with a deposit of a minimum of 1,000 shillings and get 10 minutes free. Airtel to Airtel calls valid for 24 hours. Offer is applicable for a one-time transaction. Terms and conditions apply. Airtel Money. Simple, secure, borderless. Welcome to the home of our stars. Come on in. We have our movie. Gossip. <laughs> Reality. Conflict. Tulinane comedy. Basirebu Bafibo now leave right here. Because no matter where you go, this is the home of our stars. This year. As Palm Magic Mix 3, we are delighted to invite you to see, experience, and celebrate with us. Palm Magic, the home of our stars. Multi Choice Uganda is regulated by the Uganda Communications Commission. The Uganda Cranes national football team soars higher yet again to qualify for the much-anticipated World Cup in Qatar 2022 with a game against Kenya. Support our boys from the comfort of your home with friends and family as Uganda takes on Kenya on 11th November at St. Mary's Chitenda Stadium starting 4 p.m. Uganda Cranes Paka Qatar with Airtel, the official sponsor of the Uganda Cranes football team. It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field could not be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Ah, 
My radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communications sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. Introducing Learn From Home Data Bundles. Customized bundles for you and your family to study or work seamlessly from the comfort of your home. Use any of these affordable data bundles to connect to your MiFi, routers, laptops, tablets and smartphones while avoiding unwanted internet exposure and ensuring undivided attention during online classes. Enjoy instant access to Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet and selected educational websites. Sites. Dial star 175 hash to buy your Learn From Home bundle today. Airtel, the smartphone network. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for watching and welcome back from the break. Scientists at Makere University have done research on worms in soil that if not handled, they are likely to cause danger on crops. This led by Professor Nicholas Kajimu. They say research in underway is underway to see that nematodes it can be useful in other terms to prevent affecting crops. When we want them, we have techniques of going to your garden, extract them, mass produce them, and release them uh, to the farmers. Uh, and we work in collaboration with the big institutions which our farmers are aware, that is narrow. Initially in nature, the pests you are having for your crops, they have natural enemies. And uh, these natural enemies include some worms or what we call nematodes and these worms are the one which we want to mass produce these worms are insect killing worms cause of nematodes so there are more nematodes here and there are, are different species the species in Uganda is more severe it causes more damage than the one which occurs in, in Tungamo not that in Tungamo has no nematodes they are there but the species is different so the species here is more severe and he has killed most bananas and has gone. And, and that's, that's how the paint picture is. There has been an increase in domestic tourism in Ginger City and with more foreign tourists jetting into the country, the industry is on a revival path. UBC visited Bongi, Uganda, one of the most booming tourist hubs in Jinja. The tourism and hospitality sector in Jinja City is currently relying on domestic tourists. With the numbers of local tourists growing by the day, the sector players are optimistic. People have still felt like, no, it's, it's a bit scary. Yeah, many people I think have been too scared even to leave the house. Um, but luckily you're seeing people freeing up now. However, there are concerns on coffee time. I think the main problem now is the curfew, to be fair. Um, seven o'clock is very early. Um, there's one safari we no longer do because of the curfew. We used to do a twilight safari, but now the curfew stops that. And with, with COVID around, we don't want to bring our customers into a village house to eat food. Let's just, we'll stay away from that until this all clears. The recent reopening of Banji, Uganda, a center of tourism activities, has breathed life to adventure tourism in the area. This isn't my first time doing it. My first time it was, yeah, it was much fun. Actually, I came excited doing it, and that day I did it twice. So this time round, I've come to do the third one. I'm 12 years old, and this is my first time. <laughs> Man, I'm feeling kind of nervous. In the past, the fear of the unknown has prevented Ugandans from participating in activities such as bungee jumping, rafting and tubing. First for good, at least um, domestic tourism, it's, 
it's okay it's like now it's what you are relying on because the international is not yet like fully open yes so it's the best activity for Ugandans, foreigners, yeah. Some places they'll have a single rope holding onto the bungee cord. Some places the bungee cord is just pure rubber. Here there's always two of everything. There's the main one and there's the backup one. So here there's the main rope, then there's the backup rope. And inside the bungee cord itself there's the main rubber that holds the person and there's a backup fall arrest system as well. Charlotte Amuge for UBC News. Um. Refugees and host communities in West Nile have ventured into commercial agriculture in order to achieve a sustainable livelihood. The refugees had to find an alternative source of livelihood since the World Food Program cut food aid due to COVID-19. Refugees and locals formed village saving groups to borrow money and practice commercial agriculture and other businesses. World Vision has come up with security protection and economic empowerment program in Uganda. The project funded at a tune of 11,737,000 euros by European Union and members of the consortium to boost capacity of the two communities through skills training and financial support. Juma David is a refugee from Omogo Zone in Rhino Camp Settlement. He does farming to supplement the World Food Program food ration. The ratio is from 100% was reduced to 70%. People will run back to South Sudan when we do not encourage ourselves with agriculture. We want it to be self-reliant. We have learned on how to do farming as a business. When this genus grew up, we harvested it, we shall get some money. Sustainable agriculture, financial inclusion and skilling of the youth are the components under the SPRIM project, where a complete value chain of production and marketing to increase incomes of refugees and local communities. Supreme Project wants to address access to agricultural inputs by involving private sector players through the challenge of fund component of the project under SNV. We are looking at supporting uh, 30 private sector players at a tune of 9,090 euros. Uh, the biggest being access to input. We have been able to train them in the VSLA methodology for transformation so that they are able to progress and have a means of livelihood. In order to be able to transit from uh, subsistence life to commercial life. Under the office of the Prime Minister, refugees are allocated a 50 by 50 piece of land, but due to good relationship, refugees rent land from the locals. You, only, you just only give them some uh, little token, and that token is the money we got from our savings also. Charles Sekatoa, the Supreme Project Manager, noted that COVID-19 possesses threat to implementation of the project at inception stage. As you know, uh, the districts that are hosting the refugees um, have limited resources and uh, when they host refugees, these resources are constrained. The major challenge has been uh, COVID-19. Uh, we designed the project in 2019 without knowing about this pandemic. Uh, the pandemic with the, it's, uh, that came with a lockdown affected our start. Uh, we were not able to start uh, certain activities. We had to postpone a few. So we are able to reach more people uh, in unison as a consortium. The four-year spring project is implemented by World Vision, Zoa Rice, West Nile and SNV in four West Nile refugee hosting districts of Telego, Madi, Okolo, Obongi and Moyo. Tens of thousands of Ethiopians rallied in Addis Ababa on Sunday in support of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's government as federal troops fight rebellious forces who are threatening to march on the city. A state of emergency declared by the government on Tuesday allows it to order citizens of military age to undergo training and accept military duties. People have gathered in the capital Addis Ababa in support of the government. They denounced the rebel group, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, who have been threatening to take the capital and oust the government. The armed conflict and the civil unrest continue in the country. 
Sunday's rally came five days after the government declared a nationwide state of emergency to protect the civilians from the rebels. I stand with my country. I will never give up my country. That is what I promised for myself today. I believe that all people should unite and pass this cruel time together. Earlier countries, including the United States, Denmark and Italy, asked their personnel in Ethiopia to evacuate. Some protesters denounced the United States and some other countries who have called for a ceasefire. They say they don't want interference from abroad. Today we have shown them that Addis Ababa is not under siege and nothing happened on the city. The young generation should avoid the fake news that could damage our moral fabric. Everyone is talking about MTN shares. I am Jenny Kafulua Shares, and I am here to show you how you can get them. First, you need a Securities Central Depository account, or SCD account in short, and you can open one right now using MTN Momo. It's free of charge. Just get your phone and your national ID, and let me show you how. Now, why do you need an SCD account? Well, because every time you get shares in any company, well, including MTN, your shares are going to be kept in this account. But this is not a bank account, and you don't need to go anywhere to open it. So is your phone and your national ID ready? Good. Let me show you how to open your SCD account. First, dial star, 165 star, 65 hash, or use my MTN app. Then select option 1, to submit SCD account application. Then enter your full national ID number or NIN. Next, select your preferred stock broker and then choose option one to accept the terms and conditions. Lastly, enter your mobile money pin and wait for confirmation, which you will receive on SMS. Oh, by the way, stock brokers are the people authorized to help you buy or sell any listed company shares, so you need to choose one. That's it. Once you have your SCD account, you're ready to start applying for your MTN shares for as low as 100,000 shillings for 500 shares. Everywhere you go, MTN. Kagani no tuwa leke decha tulesi. Tuzia tukarange mfunezi wea kodara. Eno yeko TV super. Ea waka kuje. Njagara wekani. E watari kwe mamaja. Urotuba tusimbu deneko TV super dupa. Wa wa wa. Nilanga bakutusia kechi gecha waka wejia. Aba shake mwanguri. Kogata ne usine mwujudomu haba tukumituare etano mwe kumitano. Wa wa wa. So kablaza wefu ni echirungo cha go TV super. Echi judobu lungi. Ove mwaje. The Uganda Cranes national football team soars higher yet again to qualify for the much-anticipated World Cup in Qatar 2022 with a game against Kenya. Support our boys from the comfort of your home with friends and family as Uganda takes on Kenya on 11th November at St. Mary's Chitenda Stadium starting 4 p.m. Uganda Cranes Paka Qatar with Airtel, the official sponsor of the Uganda Cranes football team. The Uganda Powerlifting Federation has named three lifters on the provisional Uganda national team squad that will represent at the FIBA World Championship in China come March 2022. These include Matmut Jude, Suleiman Sembatia and Toti Ernest. Among the men, while the ladies to enter camp are Lydia Nachide, Vanessa Nassari, Persian Stoffi and Ali Mutaguya. The Federation President, Kenneth Sechiranda, says that those were the best from last month's club powerlifting championship hosted at Land Star Hotel, March India. Sachidanda was at the award ceremony for the club's championship with lifters including Nego Mohammed, Rosbel Birunji, Vesta Chalimpa, Kapere Amir, Tamale Safalu and Ronald Lukonge rewarded for excellence. Many of these will enter camp in order to be in good state 
at the FIBA World Championship in Shanghai, China, where more than 50 nations are expected. Following 13 days of action under the 20 uh, of the 20, the under 20 Sekafa Women Championship comes to a climax this Tuesday. Uganda and Ethiopia come to the final day undefeated at the UEFA Technical Center in Jeru. The local organizing committee is thrilled with the skills, talent, passion, the goals throughout the tournament. Uganda plays Ethiopia in the final game on Tuesday to determine tournament champion. Apart from five Eritrean players who disappeared, organizers of the tournament regard it as a success. Even with this, the COVID-19 time still on, we hope to have a colorful closing ceremony that will be graced by high-profile dignitaries from the Sekapa region and within Uganda. This may include, but are not limited to, the Deputy Speaker of the, of the, the Parliament of the Republic of Uganda, the former Vice President of the Republic of Uganda, members of Parliament. We, we are having a game tomorrow against uh, Ethiopia, a, a very tough game. It is our last game, actually the last game in all the matches we're going to play, meaning it is a decider who takes the trophy home. As a team Uganda, uh, we are ready for the game tomorrow and I want to assure everybody that uh, the girls are okay, they are ready and uh, very determined to win tomorrow. I'll try to everyone uh, who is coaching football when uh, a player misses two, three, uh, four chances, you definitely get worried as a coach. Uh, but in the game I'm moving in, I know they have tried to put right some of the misses they've been doing. And I know in tomorrow's game, they will be scoring the goals. Tomorrow is D-Day for uh, the Ugandan girls, and we wait to see what will come out. Meanwhile, the Girl Child Charity Boxing event, earlier postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown, has finally been fixed for the 28th November at Old Kampala Arena. The contest that aims at soliciting funds to boost women boxers with equipment will have five women fights and four male boats. The highlight among the women's boats is Diana Atwine against Doreen Nassari in a super middleweight contest. In the men's card, the cruiserweight match up between Ntege Musa and Ignacio Sonyango is expected to excite many at the Nara boxing promotion organizing organized outgoing. We have this event, it's on 28th of November at Old Kampara Sports Arena, that's where the event will be. Uh, but the focus and the target is to see uh, these girls, how they get their equipment, because right now they have challenges. They do fight, love boxing, they do everything they, they feel like they want to do, but the challenge is they don't have their equipment. That's why we in our promotions, we came up with the idea of having such a charity boxing event to see how you can help these girls. I'm calling upon all Ugandans to come and support us. More so uh, those companies, the corporate companies, you come aboard, you buy the tables, you attend the event. And I'm, calling for, I'm informing the Ugandans, those who will not manage to come to the event because we have COVID, that means we are restricted to numbers. We shall be having a few, a few people at the entry. So I'm calling upon all Ugandans, just download the app because this event is going to be live on Nara TV app. Just download the, the app, it's on your, um, on, your, on, your, on your phone, download it, then you watch the event live. And that brings us to the end of all we had for you tonight. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Michael Jordan Lukumwa. With Elizabeth Nakakoni and the whole team, we wish you the best of the night. Bye-bye. Also have enough air to it is intellectually engaging and you can only become a leader when there are problems <laughs> <laughs> i like that the same applies to to, to